It's time for a little comedy, a little content, and a lot of conversation. It's the Gino Jones Show, exclusively right here on YouTube. Now, here's your host, Gino Jones. Hey, everybody, what's happening? We made it halfway to the weekend. Yes, it is time. It's showtime. Pop, pop. It's showtime. It is time for the Gino Jones Daily Variety Show. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time, wherever you are watching around the planet, around the globe. We do the show Monday through Friday. It's the Gino Jones Daily Variety Show stream live right here on my YouTube channel. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the Gino Jones channel. As a matter of fact, you can go back and binge watch all my past episodes. I've had some great guests, great episodes. I had Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I've had Chris Jasper from the Isley Brothers. I had uh, the iconic R&B singer Lenny Williams. I've had future soul artist, new artist Gene Noble. Uh, I had a Grammy Award winning group, group that won the Grammy a year ago yesterday. I said a day ago. I meant so yesterday. I meant I was so excited. One year ago yesterday, a group named Ranky Tanky won the Grammy for the uh, the best uh, like best roots music uh, for a song and a video called Good Time that we played on the show yesterday. So go back. It's so, so many just you know Reggie Calloway from Midnight Star. Of course, my man Larry Dotson, former lead singer of the Bar K's, got a brand new single and video called I'm Good. You can go back and catch that episode. Dr. Damon Arnold. He was the uh, director of public health in the state of Illinois for, for several years. As a matter of fact, he's a uh, public health expert and infectious disease expert. So he, he will display all, all the myths and, and, and rumors and lies that y'all are spreading barbershops and hair salons and nail salons and, you know, sitting around playing cards and whatever you're playing. Yeah, all of that. So he dispels all that and tells... Uh, everybody, especially us black people, why we should get uh, the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as possible, because we're dying at three times the rate that white Americans are. So we need to handle our business. OK, I got a special guest coming up very soon. He is a, uh, a filmmaker and director. He released a movie uh, called America Street a couple of years ago. But Sundance Film Festival is doing something big in the area. And he's going to talk about that, all that coming up. Uh, let me get into this monologue. Basically, I just want to kind of recap what I, you know, what I was talking about yesterday. I say, listen, got a message. President Biden, President Joe Robinette Biden, Vice President Kamala Devi. That's Devi with a V. That's her middle name. Vice President Kamala Devi Harris, uh, Senate leader, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, his nieces. The comedian Amy Schumer, by the way, did you know that? And the House of Representatives leader, Madam Speaker of the House leader, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Show the American people that the federal government can make their lives better. Can make their everyday lives better. Show the American people that the government can do something good for you. We've seen the federal government when there is no government, when it uses that power for evil and to promote hate and white nationalism and misogyny and sexism, show the American people that the federal government can make their everyday lives better. Like I said, listen, all of the, the inside, the Beltway inside Washington speak and all the uh, parliamentary rules, damn all them rules, the filibuster. Listen, people who need a vaccine, who are about to get kicked out of their apartment, that's uh, about to lose their home, uh, people who haven't had a meal to eat, they need money, they need food, they need rent and mortgage assistance. They don't give a damn about the filibuster or Dave and Busters. They need help right now. Speaking of help, I got some good news. If you if you don't have health insurance, uh, President Biden is going to uh, he's going to reopen uh, Obamacare. So he'll I guess if you don't have insurance, you can um, 
beginning of, well, the announcement is supposed to come tomorrow. So you can, you can apply for what they call the affordable health care or Obamacare. It's going to be what they're doing because COVID-19 is, has just devastated our country. And we've had over 430 million Americans, 430,000, oh my God, no, we don't speak that into existence. We've had over 430,000 Americans that have died. We've had over 25 million Americans that have been infected with COVID-19. So uh, President Biden, to your credit, I give you credit, because he's, he's coming out the gate trying to do everything he can with executive orders. In the meantime, Senate, the House, like I said, listen, just show the American people, improve their lives and do it fast. Do it now. I guarantee you, if you show the American people that the federal government can really be on this side, can come to them in a time of need and to make sure that they can stay healthy and that their families and that their parents and grandparents can, can be healthy and can get vaccinated and can get insurance, affordable insurance, if they don't have it, if they lost it because they lost their job, or maybe they never had insurance, or that if they need food or rent or mortgage assistance, if you can show the American people that you can improve their lives like that on a daily basis, you will be in power for the next two generations. So, like I said, show the people there's a song, James Brown said, get the people what they want. Get the people what they need. It's one thing, give them what they want. Give the people what they need. And they need COVID vaccines and make it easy. We have a lot of elderly people that they don't have Wi-Fi. They don't have the internet connection. They don't have a computer. I got an idea. How about taking those same mobile trucks that people use, like the American Red Cross, when they have blood drives and they go into neighborhoods? How about using mobile trucks like that and have nurses and doctors and, and maybe nurse practitioners and medical students get on those buses, take those buses, all the neighborhoods that don't have a Walgreens or CVS, you know, in all your economically depressed neighborhoods in the black community, Hispanic community, poor white communities, rural communities where they don't have hospitals because your boy closed down all those rural hospitals. Go to those elderly people. They have a hard time getting to you. Take the vaccine where it is needed. Hey, that idea is on you. That's on the house. That's on me. So take that idea and run with it. So just wanted to recap that. Let's just forget the game, man. Time's, time is out for games. People are dying. 4,000 people a day. A couple of weeks ago, we had one day almost 4,400 people died from COVID-19 in one day. All right? So let's make this thing happen. Time for me to bring on my guests, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, he is a filmmaker and director. He released a movie a couple of years ago. It's a southern story called America Street. Now, it's a story of two brothers. So you have one brother who is trying to start a new life after getting out of prison while his younger brother, who's out there wiling out, has reached a crossroads in his life. Uh, also, my guest is going to tell you about an event here in the Carolinas, and it may be in some other places, but I know it's here in the Carolinas, celebrating the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. Now, that's big time, okay? I mean, you talking about Sundance Film Festival? That is big time. As a matter of fact, you'll get a chance if you haven't seen it. Uh, part of this uh, film festival, you will get a chance to see his movie, uh, America Street. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to bring to the show my man, the great filmmaker. That's right. I'm, I'm naming and claiming an Academy Award for you real soon, my brother, Travis Pearson. Hey, Travis, thank you for joining the show, man. Well, thank you for having me, Gino. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the time. On the listen, well, thank you for the time because I know you're busy. As a matter of fact, the uh, film festival is going on, and I know you got a prior engagement, so I'm not going to keep you. So let's just start off. Why don't you explain to everybody? Tell everybody about the um, the, the celebration here the, uh, in the Carolinas of the Sundance, the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. 
Uh, well, right now, uh, Sundance is doing a virtual retrospective uh, with films here in the Carolinas, um, South Carolina, North Carolina, and uh, basically, uh, you know, local filmmakers like myself are, you know, they chose to have screenings of it. Uh, we're going to have um, tomorrow on the 28th um, a screening of a film called uh, How Much? So uh, by a, a a filmmaker named Andrew out of North Carolina at 7 p.m. at the Terrace Theater. And uh, now, what is that going to be in the Terrace Theater? Is that going to be exactly what city? Oh, this is going to be in Charleston. In Charleston, good. Right. In yeah, Charleston, this is going to be in Charleston. Okay, good. Um, and my film, America Street, um, on the 31st at 3 p.m. At, at the Terrace in Charleston. And following my film will be at 5 p.m. the Emmanuel documentary at 5 p.m. at the Terrace Theater. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, speaking of, um, let's talk about your film for those who hadn't seen it, America Street. Why don't you tell the uh, the viewers who, who's watching now uh, the story? It's a very compelling story. Uh, I got a chance. I was honored to be a, uh, to be a part of the uh, the premiere that you had when the uh, movie first came out a couple of years ago. So just share with the viewers the, uh, your, your inspiration and, and the, uh, the plot line, the storyline of America Street. Sure. Well, America Street was basically, the genesis of it came from, was inspired from reading uh, Michelle Alexander's book, uh, The New Jim Crow, mm -hmm. talking about the mass incarceration. Yeah. And uh, that basically gave me the term um, to, um, to put pen to paper and write the screenplay about um, this guy who was incarcerated, newly um, newly released, and finding out, um, you know, shortly that he has a, a son that he didn't, you know, a five five year old son, and now he's, you know, tasked with taking care of this young young man, uh, while as trying to reacclimate himself back into civilian life. And um, and reconnecting with his mom and with his sibling, and um, it just basically talks about uh, well another thing while he was in prison he was attacked and they uh, cut out his tongue so uh, which speaks of the you know basically the voicelessness and the erasing of African American voice that was my symbol <laughs> symbolism in the film and. Um, yeah, that was pretty much the genesis of the film. Um, the reason why I named it America Street is because here in Charleston, um, for a long time, Charleston was the only place in America that had a street named after America. And I wanted to speak about the, um, you know, of course, the, you know, touch on the gentrification that's going on in Charleston and the historical aspect of the east side of Charleston to the African-American story. This is a great story, everybody. The, the movie got rave reviews when it first came out, so I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you, it is something that you need to watch. So, uh, Travis, by the way, uh, what are the platforms that people can go? Uh, is it on Amazon Prime? Is it Netflix? Uh, where can people go and watch the movie? Sure. Uh, well, it's on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. Um, you can watch it there. It's also on Vimeo. Um, you know, uh, hopefully, knock on wood, It'll be on another platform. I'm not going to say, I don't want to jinx myself, but a major um, platform. Um, but that would be in the series because my whole goal was to make that, in, you know, make America Street into a series. So, you know, hopefully, um, again, knock on wood, everything goes well. It'll be on a major platform. So yeah. from a film standpoint, so it'll be like almost like a trilogy. Uh, so it'll be like part two to America Street of, or, or series no, 14 no. for like for different for for television. We, yeah, yeah, it, it would be, you know, it would mostly chronicle the historical aspect of Charleston. Okay. Um, I'm a big, you know, I'm a Charleston director. I'm a South Carolinian, uh, South Carolinian director, and I love the city. And I, my, my goal is to, and hopes to be like Richard Link, do what Richard Linkletter did with Texas to do that in here in South Carolina, to make stories centered around this state and, and, um, and just showcase the talent that lives here, you know. So how is COVID, speaking of being a filmmaker, I'm sure COVID has affected you, COVID-19, like everybody else. So what what has been the best thing that has 
that has happened or that has come out of the isolation? And what's, what's been the worst thing or the hardest thing to do uh, as a filmmaker? Because as a filmmaker and director, I know that's, you love making movies. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's really pretty tough right now because, because of COVID-19 and it's, it's uh, highly contagious. So that's really yeah. kind of, you know, everybody's on quarantine. So how is yeah. how's that affected you as a filmmaker? Uh, obviously, I'm sure it's affected your life, but how, how has it affected it in a, in a, in a good way? Uh, and I guess the obvious bad ways. So please share that with us. Well, the the the, the great thing about you know the, the bad thing, of course, is you know the disconnect with my extended family. Family, I wasn't not able to see them as much. But the good thing, it, it gave me a time to sit down and just reflect and to actually be able to write, you know, as well as to uh, watch a lot of the, um, you know, I'm a lover of old cinema films and um, just, just to watch the old masters like, you know, Tchaikovsky and, the, um, you know, um, Fellini and, and who inspired me and, you know, Von Trier, who has been a huge influence in my style of um, filming, uh, filmmaking. So, um, yeah, I've just been just reflecting and watching old films, and um, yeah, I'm just loving it. So you're like a TMC guy, I could, you know, because I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I enjoy TMC myself. My whole family, we actually will sit around and get in that mode where you want to watch TMC. Well, I'm sure you've been influenced by some some of the more contemporary filmmakers. Uh, who would you also throw in that category that's had a huge influence on you as as a uh, filmmaker and director and writer? Well, that's a good question. Uh, you, and uh, my contemporaries? Yeah. Um, more, more contemporary filmmakers. Oh, more contemporary. Of course, yeah. you know, Spike Lee. Um, Spike Lee, you know. Um, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Charles uh, Charles Burnett is a huge, has been a huge influence on me. Um, of course, uh, Julie Dash. Um, she's awesome. Um um, what do you think, think of the, the work of God Bless Rest His Soul, of course, John Singleton, and of course, I think Ava DuVernay is brilliant also. How oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, Singleton is, I mean, of course, I, I love his work. You know, one of my favorite films of his is uh, Baby Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I love that film. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I really, you know, really dig in some of Ava's work, too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so give us some more details about the 2021 Sundance Film Festival uh, here in the Carolinas and um, give us specifics. And also, uh, before you run, because I know you got to run, I, I know you're working on some new projects, so please share as much. Hey, listen, you can break news right here, man. This is, this is your home. This platform is your home. <laughs> so tell us about some upcoming films that, that you are working on or that you will be working on and shooting. And I'm all, look, you know, I'm available. You don't even have to go through an agent, holler at your boy. <laughs> Whenever you have a reading, I'm, I'm good to go. I am right here. So yeah, let's, well, first, let's talk about the uh, 2021 Sundance Film Festival. Well, the 2020, uh, well, we're having um, two, sh two screenings, uh, one in Columbia, which is going to be a, uh, the official selections um, at the Luminal Film um, Theater in Columbia, um, which starts um, actually you know, the, the party starts tonight and then tomorrow the, the actual film festival starts okay. on the 28th. And also here in Charleston on the 28th, we'll have a screening of How Much um, on at the Terrace Theater here in Charleston at 7 p.m. Uh, my film America Street will be screening at the Terrace Theater at 3 p.m. on the 31st. Uh, and um, at 5 p.m. following my film will be a, a film, um, the documentary Emmanuel. Oh wow! About the Emmanuel Nine, and that is such a powerful, powerful documentary. I was yeah. honored to see the screening they had in in Charleston um, about two years ago, I do believe. So, listen, before you run, man, let us know. I know you're working on some big things, so share with us uh, what what you are working on as a filmmaker. And then, uh, before you get out of here, be sure to give everybody all of your social information, social media information. You know, all yeah. your you know social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. So we can also follow you that way. Okay, great. Uh, well, currently I'm working on um, actually two projects. I'm working on a film of mine um, called called The Rose Boys. Um, it's a this will be my sophomore feature film. Um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, about two two kids selling sweet grass roses in the city. And now, for those and, who don't know, Travis, I'm sorry to interrupt, but for those who are watching from all all around the world. 
who don't know what sweet grass or baskets are, could you explain to them? Because it, it's something that's really specific to the culture here in the Carolinas. Yeah, yeah well, it's, uh, it's basically uh, in the Gullah Geechee uh, community, there's um, uh, basically weaving sweet grass, uh, uh, the, the sweet grass plant into baskets, uh, roses that you can gift to a loved one. And um, they sell it here, um, uh, not just here in the state, but in the Southeast <laughs> for the most part. And it's part of the, the culture, the Gullah Geechee culture. And I w- really want to showcase that and bring that to the national, um, the national uh, plane mm-hmm. station. And um, well, and it's just a, tri- it's a, it's a, it's a love story. And um it's just following two kids selling sweet grass roses on a treasure hunt, and I'm hoping that people will really enjoy it. Um, um, when are you going to start? Um, when are you going? Have you already started shooting, or when are you going to start shooting? Uh, I'm going to start shooting this year. Um, uh, the the I, I was hoping to start in April uh, tentatively, but due to the you know the pandemic, right? Um, I'm going to see how this works out. It might be pushed up, back a little bit further, but if everything goes well with the vaccinations and and stuff will we'll be okay to start shooting then. And then um, I'm also working on another project, uh, a feature film. Um, and this one is, uh, this is a big budget film. Um, cool. So um, it's not my project. I'm working on the project. I literally just got off the, uh, just had a text conversation with the director wow. and um, I'll be working on that project too. And um, it's some pretty, um, um, some pretty big names on that project. So I'm pretty excited about that one also. And that will be um, this year also. All right. Well, as soon as you can go ahead and, you know, don't not violate the non, non, non-disclosure agreement, yeah. when you can break <laughs> the news, please come on back, man, and break that news. I here. will. Hey, listen, I will. I, a couple of quick things, and it just popped in my head while you were talking before I let you run out of here. Uh, if you could pick any actor in the world to work with, who would you pick? And if there's any living director that you could pick outside of whoever you're probably working with now that we don't know about, that you would work with, that you, if you could, you had a wish, who would who would the actor be? Who would the uh, director be? Oh wow, that's a really good question. Um, the actor, I would. Re- uh, you put me in the spot. Give me a moment. Um, <laughs> I'm not bad. I would say um, the actor I really would like to work with. I really would like to work with. Um, now you can ex- you can you can leave, you can leave me out. I, I got to be. <laughs> you don't know, don't feel any pressure. Uh, don't you know me excluded? <laughs> who, would you, um, who would that person be? I, I you know right now it would be Joaquin Phoenix, or yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. Really? Okay, well, I, I'm okay. just a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of his work. Yeah. How he, he's able to. It, His know. versatility is oh. amazing, but Denzel is my dude. I'm, I'm just. Oh so yeah, happy. yeah, Denzel. You know, and um, his son is really doing some really good stuff Isn't too. He? So uh, I saw, um, I saw John. Uh, his latest movie, uh, it's like a combination. It's like The Matrix meets James oh, Bond. Tenet? Tenet. I love yeah. Tenet. Yeah. yeah, I love uh, I love yeah. Tenet. I love Tenet. Yeah. But then we got to yeah. give a shout out to um, South Carolina's own. She is. Uh, one of the greatest uh, actors, actresses on the planet, on a par with anybody, Viola Davis from St. Matthew, oh, South Carolina. Yeah, very much so. Absolutely. I think she, she's. Uh, yeah, oh my! Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, for a fee, for a woman, um, direct, uh, woman actress. Uh, for an actress, it would have to be Viola. For a man, um, I think she's phenomenal. She's a powerhouse, oh, and God, um, yes. yeah, she's just, she's awesome. And uh, for the director. Um, um, the the director, I would have to say, um, Lars von Trier. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, well, you probably never heard of him. What was that name um, again? Uh, Lars uh, von Trier. Okay. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. So of So now, work. for those who may not be familiar with his work, could you tell him some of I guess some of his bigger? Oh, more, his more film, um, um, Breaking the Waves, um, um, Dancer in the Dark, um, Mandalay, oh, um, Mandalay, okay, Dogville. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of his work. Uh, right. Yeah, he has influenced me so much. Let everybody know where we can go and follow you on social media. 
Oh, um, you can follow me on Facebook at uh, um, America Street, or you can follow me at, you know, um, uh, or on my website of uh, vidyafilms.com. Uh, Vidya is spelled A V I D Y A Films with an S dot com. My man, Travis Pearson, filmmaker, director. We are naming and claiming that Academy Award real soon. Just, you know, hey, look, I'll, let me just, I'll just sit up, up in the balcony. Unless, like I said, listen, when you're casting, look, I am, whenever you, whenever that read, that table read happens, please sign a brother up. I'm signing my, signing myself up. Not that you can sign yourself up for a table read. <laughs> hey, Travis, I, man. Yeah, I will definitely oh, keep you in mind. I Thank you so I, much I, for your time. I love it. See, Travis is so smooth. See, that's a nice way to say, I'll keep you in mind. It's like, yo, bro, stay in your lane now. You, you, <laughs> you ain't Denzel. But if I feel that you, you fit some little character, but hey, listen. All jokes aside, Travis, thank you, my brother. I know you got to run because you got the film festival going on. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that you see, you got to see America Street. It is an amazing movie. Uh, support, uh, check out the uh, Sundance Film Festival. Uh, America Street, now that website for America Street, what is it? America Street, the movie, what is that again? Oh, it's uh, americastreetthemovie.com or Avidya Films and you know, from there, you can go. Oh, you can go to Facebook to America Street. Search Wonderful. America Street. All right. Thank you, Travis. I know you got to run. Thank you, brother. God bless you. All right. All right. Best Thank you. To you. That's my man, Travis Pearson. Uh, he is a wonderful, really uh, up and coming filmmaker. This, this brother is really dynamic. So listen, thank you for letting me be a part of your life. As always, God bless each and every one of you. God, most of all, thank you for letting me do the Gino show. You can like, share and subscribe. So do that for a brother. Hook a brother up. How about right about now? Like, share, and subscribe to the Gino Jones YouTube channel. I got to go 100,000 new subscribers this year. I did pretty good. I did. I, I got like close to about, about 130 uh, in what well, from mid October to the end of the year. So that wasn't, that was bad for a brand new channel, brand new startup. So let's, let's go ahead and step that game up. Mother, I love you. Shout out to, um, my uh, my hairstylist and barber, Markel Bailey, Kel B. Cutton, K E L B E C U T T I N, on Instagram. Uh, the official wardrobe consultant for the Gino Jones Show provided me this blazer. My man, Mr. Bruce Gage. You can check him out. Do you can just search on Instagram, Bruce Gage. Also, uh, Flyball the Store. Uh, that's a, he's one of the few officially licensed vendors to carry Negro League gear and memorabilia. Uh, but just check out Amiglio D Umo, U-O-M-O. -O. But if you just do it, I know it's like, how you spell that, G? Just search Bruce Gage, Bruce Gage, G-A-G-E, on Instagram. He's on Facebook also. Uh, but you can search Bruce Gage on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, he's got a page so you can see uh, all the gear that you can purchase. Uh, and he also, he has uh, clothes for women, too. Uh, but he definitely, fellas, you want to be looking right. The official wardrobe stylist for the show is Mr. Bruce Gage. Uh, if, and if you'd like to uh, be a sponsor, please shout out to all my potential sponsors. I'd love to have you. I'd love to have you as a sponsor. I'd love to be your pitch man. You want me to endorse your product? You know, get with me and my team, okay? You want to advertise right here on the Geno Jones Show. It's 2021. Yes, right. Let's support black businesses and black business owners, because I'm all about supporting black businesses. You know, I support any business. But listen, I'm about centering black businesses, because if we don't do it, nobody else will, because nobody else has. So you can reach out to me. Uh, Gino Jones Show on, uh, on Gmail. It's my Gmail. Gino Jones Show at Gmail. All right, everybody. I love you. I really do. We'll see you tomorrow, Thursday. All right. In the meantime, stay healthy. Wear your mask. Make sure you socially distance. As a matter of fact, double up on the mask now, according to Dr. Fauci. All right. Uh, the life you save, it could be your own or it could be the life of somebody that you love. You could save the life of somebody that somebody else loves. Let's do that. We've lost way too many lives. Over 430,000 Americans rest in peace and a prayer is out to their families. 400, over 430,000 families. It's got a hole in their soul, hole in their heart, heartbroken. Lift them up in prayer.
Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Once again, thank you to filmmaker and director Travis Pearson. Until next time, God bless. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, go binge watch all those back episodes, too. All right, thanks. Subscribe and tune in to the next episode of The Gino Jones Show, exclusively right here on YouTube.